Uh, my name is Yang Shi, and I work for Ampere Computing. I'm going to talk about the multi-size THP performance on ARM64 and uh, some proposal about uh, potential optimizations driven by the benchmark data. So uh, I'm going to uh, give a brief introduction about the benchmark environment. So the benchmarks uh, were run on Ampere Ultra platform. It's a 1P uh, with 80 cores, and it's all bare metal, so uh, no virtual machine. And uh, the kernel is used, uh, uh, it's a 69 RC kernel from uh, MMN stable, with the config ARM64 count PTE enabled, and uh, all the optimizations targeted for 69 are uh, present, for example, the uh, PTE batching uh, type optimization. And the, uh, the, all the tests is uh, run with uh, enable uh, for uh, each page size. So we, for example, enable 64K page size, but disable all other page size and run the benchmark. And uh, we run the benchmark all the way from uh, 16K to 2 megabytes. And also test with a different uh, base page size. Here, uh, 4K PS means uh, 4K base page size on R. It means the order zero page size is uh, 4K. And then we also tested the uh, 16K uh, PS. It means uh, order zero page size is uh, 16K and 64K PS. And then no memory pressure involved for the benchmarks. And then we run uh, all these workloads, Mapcached, Redis, Kernel Build, MySQL, and the video encoding, and the spec, spec int. So the first one is uh, Mapcached. So here, uh, all the columns, uh, so 4K means uh, uh, 4K page size, and 4K PS means uh, page, uh, base page size is uh, 4K. So we use the 4K as the baseline. Uh, two metrics uh, measured. The first one is uh, operations per, uh, millions of operations per second. It's uh, the higher, the better. The second one is uh, P90 latency. Uh, the lower, the better. Uh, we can see some uh, the data here, uh, for, for example, with a uh, uh, 4K base page size and 64K not folio, we didn't see any noticeable improvement for this uh, benchmark. And uh, even the larger folio didn't show any uh, improvement on this benchmark. But we saw uh, some uh, significant improvement with uh, 2 megabytes. And uh, with a 16K uh, base page size, we so the improvement with uh, two megabytes uh, large folio and uh, 32 megabytes. Uh, with 16K base page size, 32 megabytes is uh, the PMD size. And uh, 64K I think has a similar, similar gain. And uh, uh, Redis actually has a similar pattern. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, it, it, your results just seem very strange to me that the 64K, 4K page size column doesn't seem to work. No. Is, is, there, some, is there something wrong? Like, does your hardware support the uh, PT bit, or? Oh, we do. We do support the PT. So it's because, uh, actually, uh, it's because of the cost of a page table walk. So uh, e for example, with a two megabyte uh, huge page, actually, you have a PMD map. The pair table level is actually three levels. But with a uh, uh, multi site THP, it's uh, still uh, PTE mapped. So the pair table levels are four. So when you uh, have a THP miss, you have to uh, do the pair table walk. I, I'm aware. And uh, uh, it uh, spends more time. I've just never heard anyone talk about the extra level of page tables costing 20% performance. Like if the extra level of page tables, 20% performance, yep. I mean, there are some other optimizations we can explore. Mm-hmm, uh, huge page. But, I mean, are you sure about that result? Yeah, like, I'm sure. sure that's the reason? Yeah, actually we, uh, we measured the, where the, kind of, uh, uh, in our, uh, I think we measured that the data is that uh, for Redis on MapCached, actually 15 to, 20% of CPU time was spent by <laughs> page table walking. And you I mean, think the... Uh, do you mean the hardware page table walking? Yeah, work? hardware page table walking. Wow. Actually, uh, the... Thank you. Actually, uh, the paper published by CMU and Meta also showed similar data on x86. They tested uh, some Meta applications, for example, uh, cache and web service. 
they saw the similar result. 15% to 20% CPU time was spent in hardware repetitive work. So they promote a huge page to reduce the cost of repetitive work. So, I mean, have we, has anyone been looking at, like, like I don't know, like an elf node or something to, to run executables in a four or three level page table environment? Like, if that's a 20% bump, that's, that's yeah. huge for yeah. some applications. Yeah. Uh, for hardware side, I don't know. Because the page table is uh, designed like that. No, you get to select on a per process basis how many levels are in your page table in ARM, if I remember right. Uh, I mean, there's some sort of wonkiness about that, but there is. Yeah, but you have to. I think you have to change the base page size, right? You have 16K on 64K. For example, for 64K, the level of page table is three levels. No, but you can, you can restrict the total address space and get less levels in ARM. OK. Maybe. Software selects. But currently for kernel, it's a four levels. See. Yeah. Or maybe increase the size of TLB. This is also really surprising. Like, I'm as surprised as Jason. Mm -hmm. To me, normally the number of levels doesn't make a difference. It's, it's usually in the TLB, like caching partial walks, yeah. uh, like usually fewer levels means, well, usually like larger TLB entries means yeah. partial walks. Yeah, I better think James mentioned that uh, I think the typical optimization used by the modern CPUs, they cache the, all the intermediate level page table translation uh, transparently. So with the uh, large size uh, PMD size huge page, actually you'll get much better and much more benefit than the four level pair table. Yeah, I think this is also the reason. Can One of the contributing factor. Can you remind me what CPU you're using? Uh, Ampere Ultra is an ARM64 CPU. Interesting. Yeah. I'm under the impression that at least Ampere 1, which came after Ultra, didn't use the contiguous bit. Uh, at least you could set it, but it, it didn't use yeah, it. Yeah, but Ultra used that. OK. Yeah. okay. The next one is a kernel, <laughs> kernel build. Actually, we test uh, the different page size and uh, we measure the, the time spent by uh, kernel build and the memory use and the number of page faults. Uh, I think the, we saw the similar pattern that uh, once the page size reached to 64K, I mean the large folio size 64K, uh, we didn't see uh, much more gain with any uh, folio larger than 64K. And uh, for the kernel build benchmark, actually the gain mainly come from the, the reduced uh, page fault. Uh, of, of course, the contiguous PTE uh, the, uh, is a contributing factor, but I think the major gain came from the... This, this doesn't match anything I've measured on either ARM or x86. This, um, we, we, yeah, we, the, 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 the time, like we, 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 even on x86, which by definition doesn't have, uh, Intel x86, which by definition doesn't have a con PT, but we saw significant reductions in, in time from using, I think even 16K, much less 64K. Oh yeah, we, we saw the improvement with 16K, but I just saw 64K here. But I mean, the, there's no more gain uh, larger than 64K. For example, 128K on 256K, I mean that, yeah. yeah. And the memory usage we see uh, for six, uh, 16K base pitch size is still manageable, but with the 64K base pitch size, the memory usage is below the way, below. It. So, yeah, kernel build. Uh, for the other benchmarks, for example, uh, the video encoding, spec in, and the MySQL way, didn't see any uh, gain with any other page size. So they may be not sensitive to the page size. Uh, yeah, for spec int, we, we saw a sing low single digit gain for some of benchmarks from spec int, but just uh, less than 4%, not very uh, noticeable. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, by the way, and uh, one more point I want to add here that uh, I forgot to put in the slides that I just uh, did a quick test for the memory reclaim because with the larger piece size, we are supposed to have a shorter uh, LRU. So, but uh, the re uh, I made a simple benchmark to populate a four gig bad memory area and uh, calling M device page out to reclaim uh, to swap all the four gig bad uh, area. Uh, the swap is uh, the Z ring based. I can see the uh, and measure the time spent by the M device. I can see the uh, time spent by M device reduced by 23% with uh, comparing between 4K and 64K. But with the 128K and the larger way, I didn't see noticeable improvement for that. So uh, based on the data, <laughs> based on all the data, uh, it, it, it looks like a CT4K maybe the the pay for the size for the most workloads on applications, and they get get the most improvement from that. And anything uh, larger than that didn't show a kind of no sizable gain. So for the allocation policy side, I I mean, uh, we can maybe uh, make some, make it more, more simple. And we have uh, actually two choices. The first one is that we can start with the largest possible order. For example, we have a one megabyte VMA. And when we do allocation, we start for one megabyte. Uh, if it's a failed, we fall back. We forget to sit for k So we keep all the intermediate size. We don't try them uh, one by one. Um, the other way is that we start from, actually this, uh, starting from the largest possible order is the current behavior of the, the kernel. Uh, the other way is that uh, we can start from 64K. Uh, no, uh, even the VMA is much bigger than 64K, but we start from 64K. For this way, uh, the benefit is that uh, we, uh, we save some memories, because for if we allocate, uh, for example, one megabyte mem memory, uh, we don't know if the application will Except all of them, so we may have some uh, memory waste. If we start from smaller size, we can save memory. But the problem is that uh, if we want to uh, promote the size of a uh, folio, uh, we have to uh, rely on, for example, M device collapse on KQPD to collapse the larger order of a uh, page for uh, folio for that area. And with this way, I think we can uh, make the THP more more transparent. Actually, currently we have the user space interface to uh, have uh, the kind of control knobs for each order from, from uh, 16K to 1024K. So we, based on this data and uh, if we implant, imp implement the uh, allocation policy, I think, oh, sorry. I think we can remove, mm, remove all the, the knobs and uh, we kind of uh, go back to to the behavior before before multi site TP. So I have just uh, have one global knob said always and vice and never. And the user just uh, said uh, if they want a huge page and all the uh, folio size uh, orders actually what what uh, order of folio will be allocated to the application is controlled by kernel. So it's totally transparent. So uh, user uh, it's a, yeah, kind of a, the kernel makes a decision for user space. Yeah, and with this way, I can, we can uh, simplify the kernel code and the user interface. Yeah. That's what I have. Any questions? Actually, I, 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 I think we should be more uh, like, uh, sensitive to users' requirements. Like, for example, uh, in user space, anonymous memory can be most from like, uh, Java heap or native C heap. They have their own mechanism to manage memory. For example, they might map a large memory and then they just manage them by by themselves. For example, after after user free call free interface to free some memory, 
And uh, by the way, we are just uh, uh, return memory to system in their own way. For example, sometimes they return by four kilobytes, sometimes they return by uh, 64 kilobytes. For example, what I have seen in Android is actually, for example, native C HIP is just, it's just uh, return memory to system by four kilobytes. If, for example, you get a lot of large folio, then user space is just calling, don't need by four mm -hmm. kilobytes. Then you get a lot of fragments in the, in this way I made. You waste a lot of memory. So this is much, much worse than totally removing MTHP at all. You totally use small folio. You get bad, better performance when using large folio. So, so, so basically, yeah, user space has, has no idea the system is using large folio, right? They they just they, they just they just low the base page size is four kilobytes. So mm -hmm. I I mean we we yeah so we can predict the user space use uh the behavior of user space. So 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 yeah, if we can provide some way to detect what's going on in user space and uh, like uh, dynamic change, the uh, will let user space to decide the uh. Folio size of each way made by themselves by calling some um, advice or something like that. Then it's it's actually yeah even but bad for them. Uh, yeah, but I think uh, uh, for the reclaim side, uh, it's a user space decision to uh, you know how to manage manage the memory uh, with a large page folio wire. I think it's a uh, uh, a problem in user space. Uh, actually, some yeah, yeah, I agree. Does yeah. Um, ma does uh, do uh, do something smarter? For example, uh, MapCached actually implements its own memory manager, and it, it, it actually just reads the uh, THP knob. If it's a uh, THP is enabled, and uh, it will check the size of PMD size, and it will manage the memory in the P huge PMD size. Uh, yeah, so for Java, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not. Expert on Java, but uh, I don't think that it will have any impact to how kernel make a uh, allocation decision, right? It's just about yeah. How, actually, how right now, for example, it is own memory. Right? Yeah, like native 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 heap management, like uh, J malloc or uh -huh. like Scudo, they they have no idea. Oh, yeah, I MTHP think for JE you, yeah. you also could control whether the JE malloc is a huge page uh, aware. Yeah, if we control, so the problem is if we set the page size to 64 kilobytes, and then we get a lot of fragments in JE malloc itself. So, <laughs> so we still with a lot of money, uh, a lot of memory, and yeah, after we set the like page size of JMalloc to 64 kilobytes, so uh, yeah, so I mean, we need we need some yeah you know, we need some approach to make user space and color space can like uh, synchronize with each other on the folio size. Uh, uh yeah, um, so but my point is that uh I think user space user space can manage the memory from uh. For example, huge PMD size. You know, anything smaller than huge PMD size is actually properly aligned. And uh, for example, 64K is definitely aligned and 2 megabytes. So I don't see any problem. No, so no, no, can, can I, can I jump problem? in here uh, for a second? Mm -hmm. um, the, um, I think I'm going to say something that ends up where, where Z, I think that was Z, uh, was going. Um, the, the line there that says simplify user interfaces, um, it's, it's not necessary to have all these possible orders. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I agree with that. Um, and mm -hmm. I've got a couple of things that support that claim. The first is, if you look at how we use huge TLBFS, mm -hmm. the way you use that is that user space is aware of the sizes and yeah. they get to pick which one they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here you're saying, no, we don't need that, let's take it away. But this system is very similar. It's, it's got a lot of different page sizes, and we, we have been exposing that to the user in this early version. 
the second part is, and I've seen that being used, uh, and it is necessary. We, we, we know perfectly well for this one particular application that it, it eats two meg page sizes and is very happy, but it's, it's useless if it's smaller than two meg, and it doesn't help us if it's larger, and so it's just a waste of time to pick other page sizes for that particular thing. So it, uh, I think if you, <laughs> there's no reason to take this away. Uh, it's a reasonable interface. It's similar to huge TLBFS, uh, and, and we're seeing it be useful. So I, I don't think that's the simplification that, that we want. I think for the fourth point that uh, should tell you I think there's a difference between transparent should page and should tell you FS. For should tell you FS is a kind of user aware, right? You, can, you resolve the memory in advance, but transparent should page is transparent user space. Uh, I mean, simplify user interface, the sh ship has sailed, and I'm happy that it sailed, and the way it is, I think it is very good. We are striving towards something where at some point we will set auto. And somebody will opt in, and the, like the kernel will just do that automatically. But if you see like what people like are discussing, what benchmarks we will, we're not at the point where we can just do any order allocation and break all of user space and consume I don't know how much more memory. You you have to consider there is a reason why transparent huge pages will always opt in. If there would not have been a reason, then we would never have added a toggle for shared memory and everything. Memory waste is real. And I mean, Ryan did some very excellent benchmarks of like how do the different orders affect, for example, memory consumption. You, you touched on that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there is much more to have. So I think the, the interface right now, although it, it might look complicated, it gives you the freedom to see what works for your workload or not. For example, I, I think like Google, Google Go library that manages memory in 64 kilobit chunks, if I'm not wrong. It, it, just, just like what, what uh, Sean said, it, it might not make sense to give it smaller stuff or bigger stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, like, trying to think that that we should just uh, remove an interface we added uh, three releases ago for very good reason after various discussions and experiments is a little bit, I'm sorry to say, naive. Um, what we have been discussing is maybe, and I'm not sure if we want that, is for user space to give hints what might be reasonable. For example, if you know that, mm -hmm. I don't know, Chair Malloc manages memory in 128-bit chunks, then maybe, uh, 128 bytes chunks, maybe it should have a way to say, well, this VMA maybe do something reasonable, but the truth is most of user space is not aware of that, and we call it transparent huge pages, and you say on your slides make THP more transparent, that, that's nice if you can handle the memory waste and everything around that, but we're not there yet, and I mean, we, uh, we barely have a clue what to do here for anonymous memory. Uh, no, speaking of the memory waste, I actually That's I'm the not biggest concern, memory waste, and then yeah. performance optimizations. Uh, yeah, there's a concern about the memory waste, but uh, my question is that um, how, how bad it is. If we, for example, if we optimize our allocation policy, we start with from uh, 64K, I think we can you know, kind of minimize the memory waste. Right, but what about the workloads that just want to use two megabyte pages? Oh, oh two Th megabytes? Yeah, virtual machines, they are very happy if you give them two megabytes. Why would you want to start with 64K? You're very focused on one or two applications, but the truth is most applications are not the same and their demands are very different. Just like Chung said, like there are applications that, like if you give them 64K, it's going to be a waste of time. Give yeah, them two yeah. megabyte or give them four kilobyte. Yeah. So it, it, I, th I think the sad truth is we're not there yet to allow for any orders and have the like, system make smart decisions. If we would mer merge what you propose here into RHEL, most of our customers will like burn our uh, issue tracker with fire because we're wasting memory. We're getting like, reports regarding that all of the time. Um, but then there are users that want to use, for example, maybe NVIDIA users that want to use two megabyte on 64K, uh, and you, you have to give them that and not everything, and assume the world is perfect, everything works, although it really doesn't. So I, um, just as an example, we turned on um, uh, THP always for two megabytes on our web servers, and they immediately oomed. <laughs> but 
but but at the same time, if we were more careful with them advice and give them two megabyte where it matters, they performed a lot better, right? So they they want larger pages. At the same time, we can't just put them any anywhere there is a fault, right? So I agree with David. I think we have to be smarter about figuring out. Uh, yeah, I, I don't where's, agree. Where's their strand in memory? And for the, what size should be allocated for the memory, right? Yeah, right, agree. and uh, I hope that at some point we'll be able to have that interface, but have an option that says auto. You would say like THP enable auto, and it will just work perfectly. Yep. We, we're prepared for that, but uh, I, I don't set my hopes up that we were there within the next three to four years. It's oh, just. Yeah, I don't mean we are going to remove that interface in the next release. No, I don't mean that. I mean the for long yeah, term. Long term, but I mean long term. That yeah, has been discussed on the mailing list. Uh, I think like three times already. And when we were designing the interface, that the ultimate goal is just like punch in auto, and yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah, I think the. Mm -hmm. So I actually, one uh, one of my uh, goal for the benchmark is that uh, we can make a decision based on the benchmark data. And I think the benchmark data is uh, quite a uh, kind of in favor of uh, our automatic uh, memory uh, management for the large folio. You know. But I don't mean we are going to remove the current interface at any time soon. It's a long run. You know. <laughs> I know it's still new, and still users are still trying to testing and adopting the large folio, and they run their application, and they figure out that what's the best picture set for them. And uh, yeah, after that, we can you know, move forward. Yeah, we have a lot of thing to do, like split to 64 chunk before swapping out to mitigate swapper fragmentation. Actually, it doesn't work because in our phone, we are using, we're we are just using 64 kilobytes. And after a couple of hours, we, we, the, the uh, swap out uh, pullback ratio can, yeah, absolutely reach 100%. So we actually need to fundament, fundamentally change the the way we are we are handling swap out of large folio. So so, so uh, split. Uh, on the um, auto THP um, thing, David just mentioned, we do have a project called Auto THP at Google. I think I proposed a couple of years ago. Basically, um, it's very fi uh, very similar to what uh, FreeBSD does. Uh, we try to allocate the uh, highest order uh, upon a page fault, but we don't really map it, uh, map it at uh, the PMD or higher level, you know what I mean? We still map it by PTEs. So basically we reserve this physical address space, but we map it by PTEs, and uh, we use the uh, additional access bits because you know uh, even if we couldn't map it by PMD, we still don't, we have actual um, PM access bits there, we can monitor the utilization so that for uh, in the case of high internal fragmentation, we're going to just split it and take whatever we give to this, um, we reserved for this page fault or for this uh, application, uh, take it away. So basically, it's, uh, it, 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 its core is uh, detecting internal fragmentation automatically. Building kernel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is uh, our team and the goal we want to achieve in the future, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Zach. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Zach O'Keefe, I think uh, a lot of people uh, know him. Uh, he, he has been working on this. Okay. Probably he's going to have some prototype by the time of uh, plumbers as well. Yeah, look forward to seeing the patches. Thank you. Any any more comments or questions? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.